Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm going to try to show you guys uh, how to do, how to achieve a good caustics uh, inside V-Ray. Uh, first of all, uh, many people don't know, don't understand actually uh, what caustics is. So if you do a very quick search in Google, you find these images that show exactly what the, the effect is. Uh, caustics is what happens when light uh, bounces after uh, reaching an object, a reflective object like this. So you have this uh, little shape like here. Or uh, when it goes through a refractive material like glass or diamonds or whatever it is, uh, making light uh, gain a shape like this, like a focus. So, uh, the problem is that most people don't use caustics on a daily basis because they find it to be very uh, slow and very heavy on the machine. So, first, we have to understand why this happens. Let's check this scene. I have a standard scene, I have a reflective mirror-like material applied to this uh, tube, half tube, and some sort of glass. All these are pretty standard actually, uh, apply, apply to uh, a V-ray sphere. Uh, what happens without caustics is that uh, light bounces, I have GI on, and light bounces here, and you don't see any shapes, uh, you don't see the light uh, coming from uh, the reflections or the refractions. Uh, of course, we can try to, to turn on caustics, so I have here pretty very low setting. Uh, I'm just gonna turn on caustics and hit render. So I'm gonna show you guys this in, in real time. So have like I don't know seven, eight seconds uh, of caustic calculation, and I have the render. You see, I have a very uh, low end um, setup. My machine is not like really powerful or anything. So, you see, we can see already the caustics here, and it looks really grainy and not well defined. Uh, the the reflection and the refraction they don't they're not working well, I think. So, first we have to understand why this is happening. So let's see. Uh, my scene here is again a pretty standard scene. Uh, I have a V-ray light plain light, lighting the whole scene and I have GI on, everything really standard. I just turned on GI and the environment. And what happens is that caustics is calculated by uh, tracing photons. Uh, what happens here is that all the photons that are casted by this light are actually really spread. You know, you can see like here, they come in this direction and in this direction and and on the other viewports, you can see also him like this and this and here, this, this. So there's a huge waste of calculation here because I'm only concerned about the photons that actually hit my sphere and my half tube. So if the caustic photons are not hitting my two objects, I'm not really concerned about them. I don't care about them. So I'm going to teach you guys a trick so you can have a really decent caustics in very low times. First, I'm going to select this light, which is causing all the caustics in the scene at the moment, and go to its V-Ray properties, like here. And I'm going to turn off caustics. So I don't want this light to create, to generate caustics. So just hit render. So you see uh, it just skipped uh, the caustics and there you go, you have a normal scene only, it's like only GI is on, so it, it doesn't look like caustics is being calculated because it's actually not being calculated. Just uh, just reminding you guys that the uh, the environment, the GI environment skylight override does not affect caustics, so this is pretty good in this situation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a light that can actually focus the caustics uh, on this particular area of my scene. And to do that, I'm just going to use a standard light, a target spot. And I'm going to create, let, 
let's just uh, maximize this viewport and I'm going to create something like this okay just make sure they have the same or kind of the same angle right uh, let me just you know, center the light with the scene like this uh, and I'm going to make the, uh, the cone right the this the fall off and the, the, the hot spot as small as I can like this just making sure I'm still seeing the uh, the two objects so like this like this and like this okay I think it's pretty cool right now uh, let's just check the other viewport you see I'm just went too small like here so I'm going to again do like that okay I think it's enough so this is probably the uh, lowest or maybe the smallest cone I have or I can use here in order to focus all the caustic photons to one uh, single spot now uh, the problem with this light is that it's actually affecting my illumination, so my lightning as a matter of fact, so uh, I don't want it to so I'm gonna hit exclude just hit include so I am including nothing here so no matter how many objects I have or if I I don't know insert more objects here uh, afterwards it's not a problem because this light is including nothing so it's like excluding everything so but it's kinda easier so, uh, the other thing is, let's, let's first, let's render. So, you have the caustic photo map being uh, calculated right now. For kind of the same uh, amount of time it took the first time. Uh, but you are probably not going to see anything good like this. You see, again, it looks like there's no caustics in there. Because, again, there's not. What's the problem? The problem is that standard lights do not have decay. So I have to set decay to inverse square and it's a start to like, I don't know, five centimeters or two inches at most. Uh, and it's important that you work with this uh, setting, like display units, because uh, otherwise you're going to be working in default units, which are like I don't know. They tend to be like um, inches, but you never know. So uh, you better set it to centimeters. I think it's it works better. And of course, right now my light is really weak, so I have to set the multiplier to a really, 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 really high number, like this but it's really really high see don't worry about this number it's totally like you're going to try it and see what fits let's try it now again same eight seconds which is actually really uh, short really fast and remember my machine is not like a professional workstation and let's see what we get here. Oh, that looks a lot better, doesn't it? So you can see here we have the reflective caustics right here in a very, very nice, good looking shape. And here we have the refractive caustics. Again, very nice and very fast. Uh, here you can see a lot of things. And uh, one other thing that it's is really cool, I think, is that you can have caustics from caustics, meaning that you have enough light bouncing from the reflective material into the refractive material, you're going to see red caustics right here. So this is a really, really useful and easy um, technique that you can use anytime. So you can have the setup like uh, for your scene, you're going to ignore your lighting scene, your your lights uh, on the scene, and use uh, like 
you know special lights for the caustic so you have you can have as many as you want and you will always have sharp clear caustics and uh, the fun thing is that I'm not messing around with the caustic settings I mean it's like here it's just this I'm not doing anything so this is in my opinion the easiest way to get caustics thanks for watching see you next time